so many of Jesus' parables. Uh, but I would like us to pay attention to this series. It's very important. Uh, because, you know, a couple of people make a lot of blunders. I see people make a lot of blunders uh, because they misrepresent certain concepts in the scriptures. And, uh, for example, you know, uh, I think I discussed that in one of the Bible studies, but we are going to touch it maybe in one of the... Um, I decided to move the kingdom teaching to Sunday. And uh, on Tuesday, we just do uh, other teachings. Um, uh, you know, people talk about the, the ten uh, wise virgin. One, uh, the door was shut on five, and, you know, five, you know, entered and all those things. So we still look at those things, okay? What, you know, in the scriptures, without... Um, without putting meaning into the scripture by ourselves. Okay, and that's one of the blunders that people do. Uh, people read the scriptures and they apply, they put meaning, like they, have, they preempt what the scripture is saying. Uh, and, you know, um, when you lose, when you misinterpret a scripture or, or a, a particular teaching is mistaught, or better still, how do I put it? When you misinterpret a scripture, all right, a, an important truth, as they, they often say, an important truth is missing. When you interpret one scripture, an important truth is missing. So like a whole block of truth is missing. So oftentimes, when you get to uh, the revelation of God's word and a truth, you get accurate interpretation of a scripture, uh, most of the time it fits a lot of puzzles. Ah, yeah, no wonder. You know, you'd be like, no wonder, no wonder. Are you following me? So very important. So that, that's why I decided, okay, I'm going to just, you know, take my time and we'll pick the kingdom teaching, you know, uh, we'll take it a step at a time. Hallelujah. Praise God. So we, we started by, by looking at Mark and chapter 4. We can go there quickly, Mark and chapter 4. Um, it was regarding Jesus' parable, but we're not looking at that today. Today we're looking at uh, which of the first that became last and which of the last that became first. Okay? When Jesus says, and the last shall become the first, and the first shall become the last. So what is Jesus saying? Who, 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 who is the last that will become the first? Uh, should I just wait and become, I mean, I just stay and be the last so that, you know, <laughs> so that I can be first? Or, you know, you know, or you look at those that have, you know, been there before, say, you know, worry, you'll be the last, you know. <laughs> so we, we need to, you know, so we look at what the scripture is saying, what Jesus is actually saying in those contexts. Uh, start, let's start from Mark first, Mark and chapter 4. It was regarding Jesus' parable, and it's very important, Mark and chapter 4. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to dwell on this Mark 4 because I'd touched it before. But for the sake of uh, progression, I just want to go there briefly, then I will leave there, okay? So Mark and chapter 4, uh, look at from verse 3. He says, Lisa said, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow, and it happened as, it, as he sowed, that some seed fell by the wayside, and the bed of the air came and devoured it, and some fell on the stony ground, and where it did not add much earth. And immediately it sprang, sprang up because it had no depth of earth. Okay, are we together? Uh, but when the sun was up, it was crushed, and because it had no root, it withered away. Verse 7, And some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no crop. But the seed that fell on the good ground yielded what? A crop that sprang up, and increase and produce some thirty fold, some sixty fold, and you know, and went on and on. And see, so, uh, so this what I just read now is Jesus is a parable that Jesus gave to you know was, was called was he gave this parable to a lot of people, and he said where well, a sower went to sow seed, and as he sowed the seed, some fell by the wayside, some among I mean on stones on rocky grounds, and some uh, among thorns, and some fell on the good ground. And he said where well, the one that fell on the good ground, you did. A uh, lot of fruit. And I told us a while ago, I said, see, if you are here, if you listen to Jesus here, yeah, you could be confused. You could say, well, probably Jesus is talking about agriculture or how to plant, you know, seed and all. But if you look down, yeah, Jesus explained, look at what happened in verse 10. Um, uh, then after in verse 9, Jesus said, let him the house here, let him here. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Amen. You know, when you make such statement, if you have here, yeah. Okay. So, uh, and that's also, you know, it's, it's a little bit scary because Jesus would say this after reading this parable and would say, he that has ear, let him hear until today. Okay? Even those that have ear are not hearing. Okay? Uh, we'll look at it. you understand what he meant. So it's like saying, if you have eyes, see. <laughs> Amen. 
So, you know, it can be also be, um, it can be either provoking or, you know, you know, when, when you tell somebody, you have eyes, see, use your eyes. Like say somebody, use your eyes. Hey, Amen. Use your ear. That's what Jesus was trying to say there. Use your ear. Jesus went to a Pharisee's house, house and as they were eating and, you know, because he didn't wash his hand. Then they, uh, the Pharisee was like, ah, why will you not wash it? The Pharisee was surprised that like, Jesus did not wash his hand. And Jesus now started saying, fools. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, you, ah, she said, calm down, at least, no, let, let, but okay, let's keep reading. Amen. Are we together? Are we together? So look at verse 10. So, that when he was alone, yeah, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable. And he said unto them, what? To you, it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. Now, listen up, everybody. That's where we're going now. So Jesus just gave a parable about a seed. I mean, a sower who went to sow seed. And he saw, you know, did all these dramas, yeah? Then they came to Jesus and asked him to tell them about this parable. And Jesus straight away said, said, unto you is given what? To know the mystery of the kingdom. So in other words, listen, listen. I told us before that if you want to understand a parable, Okay, don't jump and begin to give meaning to it. Let the bearer of the story, let him tell you what he means. So, and yeah, Jesus is saying that all that I just told you, what does it mean? It means that it is given unto you to know. The, that's what it means, actually. So when he says, so, so the next verse was explaining in detail. But the totality of what Jesus just narrated the totality of what he narrated is this. That it is given unto you what? To know the mystery of the kingdom of God. Okay? But unto them that are without. All these things are done where? In parable. Actually, that is their meaning. Okay? I, I, I will tell you what I mean. I will tell you. You, will, you get the concept soon. So, so, so it is given to you to know the mystery of what? Of the kingdom. Uh, let's keep reading. Now, he now says that to them that are without, it is given to them in parable. Why? So that in seeing they may what? They may not, in, in, in seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not understand. Lest they should be turn and their sins be forgiven. Now listen, listen, listen. Listen, listen, listen. He said, they is seeing they will not, they will see and not perceive. They will hear and not what? Uh, understand. Uh, why? So that they will not be able to receive what will be that which will be forgiveness of sin in their heart. Okay? So when a man receives the word of the kingdom, listen. So what should be the product of God, the word of the kingdom? Okay. So what is the outcome of them not seeing clearly or not perceiving? Their sins are not forgiven. So then what will be the outcome of the man that sees and sees clearly? Or the man that hears and hears clearly? What will be the outcome? Their sins are forgiven. And what forgives sin? The gospel of the kingdom. That Christ died for our sins and rose again. So in other words, are you together everybody? In other words, when the word of the kingdom is preached. And it did not produce sin forgiven. Yeah, it is, the, it is as a result of the state of the heart. Of the hearer. Then it would then mean. Amen. So Jesus then said. To you is given what? To know the mystery of the kingdom. Listen, listen. Why should you know the mystery of the kingdom? So that you, your sins, what? Will be forgiven. So, listen. To you it is given to know the mystery of what? The kingdom. But to them that are outside, it's given in parable. Why? So that they will not know. They will not see it. How together? Look at Luke. That's not what I'm talking about. I just want Luke. Go there. Um, Luke and chapter... Uh, 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 chapter 8, yeah? Praise God. So uh, Luke chapter 8 verse 9. And his disciples asked him saying, What might this parable be? And he said unto them, What? He said, It is given unto you what? But to others that are without, it, the, he said, That seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. Now the parable, verse 11, Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside, what? I did I hear when the devil came and blah, 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 blah. Then, you know, we went on and on. Are, are we together, everybody? So, I, I just want us to see that clearly, to just start that. So, what are we, what is Jesus' parable supposed to talk about, everybody? The kingdom of God. Go back again to the mark that we started from. Mark that we started from. 
So he says this, he says, um, verse 13, he says, and he said unto them, do you not understand this parable? Mark 4, 13. He said, how then will you understand what? All parables. So in other words, like I told us, Jesus is saying that, hey guys, this is the basis of all my other parables. If you don't understand this one, you cannot understand others. In this one, I am not talking about agriculture. I'm talking about what? The kingdom of God. And what will the kingdom of God do? When the word of the kingdom is preached and it finds root in the heart of any, any man, a man that hears it, it will produce forgiveness of sin. Okay? And that is what the kingdom... And the, like I told us earlier, I said, the kingdom of God grows as a seed. It's sown in a man's heart and it has the potential to grow, to grow and grow and grow. Are you following everybody? Yes. So the parable of the seed and the sower is concerning the kingdom of God. Matthew and 3. Matthew and chapter 3. Are you following me? Matthew 3, I told us that John the Baptist came. Look at Matthew 3. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching in the wilderness of what Judea, and saying, Repent. You pay you what? For the kingdom of heaven or of God is at hand. It's the same thing I told us. So Matthew used heaven. Other version, other, you know, Mark, Luke, and all those ones would use God, kingdom of God. It's not different than us that, oh, the kingdom of heaven is different from the kingdom of God. It's the same. It's just uh, the writer, okay, what he is using. I used to think like that before. The difference between the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God is the same. Amen. Praise God. There's no need to overstretch it. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of what? Heaven. So, John the Baptist will preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does that mean? That it is near. <coughs> and Jesus will then come and talk about what? The kingdom of God. John 3.16. John 3.3. She read it during when she came up today. John 3.3. I just want to lay that foundation first. You must understand that what we are in about is about the kingdom of God. Everything that we are doing is about what? The kingdom of God. The kingdom of God. There is a kingdom on earth. And it's the kingdom of God. And you have received the kingdom. And you are in that kingdom. And that kingdom is spreading. You are in the kingdom of God. Jesus said in Matthew 3. It's um, John. John said in Matthew 3, he said he will thoroughly purge his own floor. Uh, his own, uh, floor. He said his fan is in his hand. I think I talked about this one time ago. That Jesus is fan. John 3, John 3, Jesus said, I mean, John the Baptist said that there's one that is coming after me. He said the lace of his shoe I cannot tie. He said he's coming, he said he's mightier than I. He said he's coming with his own fan. He said he will thoroughly purge his own floor. He said, he will, he said, I baptize you with water. <laughs> he said, when he comes, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and what? And fire. You know what that means? I, I told us before. See, it's, it's not like, you know, people used to say that. Day. I told us before. Say, ah, have you been baptized with the Holy Ghost? He said, ah, now it's time for baptism of fire. He's not he's a ghost, go necessary. That's not what he's saying. I used to think a lot before too. Then those days, long ago. Oh, now you have been baptized the Holy Ghost. You know what they mean is that now you have baptized the Holy Ghost, it's time to be now fervent in God. So you now need another baptism called the baptism of fire. Is that's not what is happening there? Go, maybe you should go there. Go to Matthew. We'll come back to this place. Matthew and 3. But it's good for us to use it so to lay the foundation. So say this to me, say the scripture, the scripture. is our evidence. Yes. And so you are not trying to infer. So just stay within the boundaries of the scripture. What he's saying is, is revelatory enough. I think I'm trying to say, look at it, Matthew 3. Because of time, we just jump to uh, um, jump to 10. Uh, yeah, let's start from 10. Look at ver- ver- from verse 7. I said, when, so this is John the Baptist baptizing people in Jordan inside water. Ooh, 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 ooh. Okay? So look at verse 7. He said, but when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Somebody say Pharisee and Sadducee. Say it like you mean. Say Pharisee. Pharisee. Sadducee, sad to see. So I want you to understand because I'm saying this so I can stick in your mind. Okay? So look at it. Let's keep reading. Where did I stop again? 
So when he saw many Pharisees, many Pharisees and the Sadducees people coming to his baptism. So look at them. Before then, from verse 1. Ah, Bible is sweet. Eh? Honestly, Bible is sweet. See, you know, you should be addicted. See, you should have withdrawal syndrome. You know what I mean? Say, let's say you have not read your Bible, let's say for one or two days. You should be having withdrawal. You know the same thing that he's doing? You're like, okay, I maybe you used, used to drink before. And you have not drank in five days and you're having withdrawal syndrome. You should be having withdrawal syndrome if you have not read the Bible for one to two days. You should be doing it like, hey, ah, your body will be scratching you. Does it not do you here? Yeah? If, he has, if he's not doing you, he will do you in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Uh-uh. You know, withdrawal syndrome. That you just, because you get, you have, you have cultured yourself that you became addicted to the word. You're addicted to studying the scriptures. You know, because, you know, addiction, people learn. Behavior, addiction is a behavior that is learned. Yes. Habits are learned. That's why a preacher once said something and I agree with him. The easiest way to stop an addiction is to replace it with another addiction. <laughs> addiction, because you have to replace it with another one. A stronger addiction. Say, mm-hmm. so, it's very difficult to stop this thing. <laughs> Find another addiction. Get addicted to the word and prayer. And you have to, you will, you will, you will deliberately be exciting yourself. Say, oh yes, Papa, glory to God. I'm about to read the Bible. And you have, you, so, you start, because if you did, there's, there's a research people say, if you do something for 20 days, okay, that it becomes an habit. So, 21 days, have you? It becomes an habit. So, you start one hour every day. You run it for 30 days. Say, no, I will. By the time you get to 10 days, on the 10th day, you'll be feeling the vibe. What, what, is, what became addictive to you? It was somebody that introduced you to it, your friends. They were doing something, and okay, you joined them to do it. And first day, second day, because you want to feel among. Are you going to say, eh? There are many habits that I learned that I later draw. Thank God the Holy Ghost helped me. It was friends. I remember when I wanted, I, I cannot forget. That's the reason why I didn't, I, I, I don't, I'm not addicted to alcohol. Because it's bitter. <laughs> I like sweet things. That's for me. I mean, without, without Christ Jesus, I'm saying without Christ Jesus. Forget about Christ Jesus now here in this point. I had, that time, it was not about Jesus. It's about that it has a bitter taste. <laughs> hey, Amen. I told you about somebody that gave me an essay gift. Yes. And I was like, ah. And you see people, you know, online, you know, ooh, 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 you know, dancing about it. And I tasted it's bitter. And people are happy doing it. So if you can be happy drinking bitter, something that is bitter. The word of God, amen, is sweet. It's sweet. sweet. Yes. So you can be happy. You, so whatever, whichever way you are able to galvanize strength, to feel the vibe on bitter alcohol, eh, galvanize that strength to feel excited on the word. Train yourself. Are we together here? Train, train yourself to talk in tongues. Train yourself. Hallelujah. Sometimes, anytime I open my Bible like this, either on my phone, or anyone, I just open like this. When I do flip, what, do you know what comes to my mind? Like, hey, the devil is in trouble. As immediately I flip it, the devil is in trouble. Because a truth is about to be revealed. That's it. Be thinking like that. Hey, the devil in my life is about to, is it? Hey. And you start it. Amen. Hey, Praise God. Where did I say we should start? Now. Matthew 3. In those days, John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judah and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For, for this is it that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make the path, make his path straight. And now John himself was, let's jump because of those. No, no. Now, jump to verse 5. Then Jerusalem and all Judea, are you following? Yeah. And all the region around the Jordan went out to him and were baptized by him into Jordan, confessing their sin. No, he had no problem with them. Sinners were coming, baptizing. He had no problem with them. Then verse 7, when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, ah, guys, you snakes, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come, therefore bear fruit, what of repentance. Okay? So who, who is he talking this to again? Pharisees and Sadducees. Yes, they are the broods of vipers. 
generation of snakes. But let's keep, let's keep reading. Then he jumped to verse uh, 10. He said, even, the, even now, the axe is what? Is led to the, tr- to the root of the trees. Even now, what? Now, listen up, everybody. So, who was Jesus speaking to here now? Pharisees and Sadducees. So, when he says, even now, the axe is laid. So, now he says, bring forth food unto what? Who is he talking to to bring forth food unto repentance? Are we following everybody? So, who, who, who was he baptizing before they came? Sinners from all over the places. They were baptized and they were confessing their sin. Then suddenly he looked up and he see the Pharisees and the Sadducees guys. And he said to them, bring forth fruit of what? Unto repentance. Then he now went ahead and said, the axe, you know what is axe did? Like, you know, this, <laughs> he said, he's laid, what? At the root of the tree. Who, so who should bring fruit unto repentance? So who is the tree that should bring fruit unto repentance? So which so which tree is the axe laid under? It's so simple. That's what we're, that's what we're just doing that so that we just you understand. Okay, good. So where did I stop? Ten. So and it says that therefore every tree which does not bring bear good fruit is cut down and thrown where? I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he who is coming after me is mightier than I. Who sander I am not worthy? To carry. Now, when, he, when you put the axe to the root of the tree, you cut it down. What do you do to the tree again? You throw it away again? Good. So the axe is laid. Then where did I start? So I indeed baptize it with water. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. Who stand I am not worthy to carry. He will baptize you what? And what? So, what? so what will the fire do here? It will burn what? The tree that has been cut down. Let's keep reading because it's a fire, 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 fire. Let's keep reading. This is not fire of love. The one I was talking about. Yeah. Uh, that's, this is not cause of fire. Okay. <laughs> Where did they stop again? So it now says, is winnowing fan. You know what is winnowing fan? So, you know, when you, yeah, they used to like, it's like a sieve. You know, in the olden days, like. So it, it, it removes the shaft from the real wheat. Okay, good. So. Now look at it. So it now says, his winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly what? Clean his own, his clean his own stretching floor and garner his wheat into the barn. But he will burn off what? The shaft with what? So which, what, what is the fire supposed to do here? Is to burn out what? The shaft. Where is the shaft? So who has the winnowing fan? <laughs> so what will the Holy Ghost do? It will separate. Then what will the other shaft do? What, what will burn the other shaft? Of course, be fire. Eh? So if I, that's why I told us the fire here is judgment. Are you getting? Are you following me here? It's not that uh, now you have baptized the Holy Ghost. It's time to be baptized with fire uh, so that you can be fervent for God. The same Holy Ghost you have received is at work in you, both to will and to do of good pleasure. It's the same Holy Ghost. Are you getting? I'm trying to say here. Have you received the Holy Ghost? Yeah. Uh-huh. You can be fervent. You can be on fire for the Lord. It's not this fire, but you can be on fire for the Lord because you've been baptized in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. So, but, but he will do it. He shared me. He will do it. Jesus will do it. He will thoroughly put his own floor. He is the master. He is God. He will thoroughly put his own floor and the shaft. He will now burn with fire. Which tree again was laid there? The Pharisees and the Sadducees. So he will take out those institutions. He will take out that institution. Because that institution in itself was not even in the Old Testament. If you go to Genesis to Malachi, you will never see Pharisees and Sadducees. Suddenly you just came to Matthew. Bam! There is Pharisees and Sadducees. Where did they come from? And they were terrorists. They were, they were terrorists in every Jesus' teaching. They are always there. In Jesus. They are the ones that came. We should, should we give Caesar this money? They are the one that, that Jesus, John said, all generation of what? Of vipers. Oh my Joe. You know, when the Bible talks about vipers, the Bible talks about Satan, devil, in the Old Testament. Genesis, we use that you are generation of vipers. Are we together, everybody? We are going somewhere. Because we are supposed to look at what is the last that is the first. Amen. 
go, 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 let's, let's flip to John 3. So that we catch, we catch this. John N chapter 3. Amen. John 3, 3, he said, Jesus answered and said unto him, Very, very, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, the word see the kingdom of God there is the word perceive. The word see is to perceive. It's not like, you know, like the same thing that Jesus said that in seeing they cannot see. So how will, how will a man now see? He must be born from above. So the word again here is to be born from above. So it's a spiritual birth. So it's the same. So he's explaining it further when he says in verse 5, Jesus answered, yeah? Verily, very I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, which is the same thing because water, which is the spirit, yeah? That's what he's saying here. Yeah, the born of water here is not baptism of water. There are scriptures that you can use for baptism. You can reference as baptism of water. But this reference here, Amen. He's referencing the new birth. Please follow me. We're going somewhere. So, hey, Jesus, time. God, have mercy. And Jesus answered, the same man is born of the spirit, yeah, of water that is the spirit. He cannot what? Enter the kingdom. So when a man is born again, when you receive the gospel, what have happened to you? You have entered what? The kingdom of God. Say, I've entered the kingdom of God. Kingdom. Say, I am in the kingdom of God. So we said it to us last week. We said, John the Baptist said the kingdom is at hand. And Jesus would then say in Luke 17 that the kingdom is among you. The kingdom is among you. Hallelujah. Remember that? That the kingdom of what? Is among you. Now, and now that you have received Jesus, you have received the kingdom of God. Because the Bible said the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but it's in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. When a man receives the Holy Ghost, that person has received the kingdom of God. Now, Matthew, praise God. Matthew and chapter... Um, let's do chapter 20. I think it's better usable. Matthew and... Matthew, 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 Matthew 20. Excuse me. Matthew 21, 21, Matthew, 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 okay, good, okay, good, so are you there, so Matthew 20, 21, let's start from verse, let's start from verse 3, well, we can start actually reading from verse, um, <clears throat> verse 23, are you there, Matthew 21, 23, please follow, so, all Jesus' parables should be about what? Huh? Yeah, you're following. Again, all Jesus' parables should be about what? Exactly. So, he will now begin to describe the kingdom of God and say, the kingdom of God is like, is like, is like. But 23, and when he was come into the temple, the chief priest and the elders of the people came unto him, came unto him, as he was teaching and said, by what authority do you teach these things? And who gave you this authority? Now, uh, so who came unto him again? The chief priest and what? The elders. Uh, in Bible study, I was mentioning about elders as a group. The word elders here would be uh, you know, group like Presbyterian. Okay? Uh, or Presbyterian, or as, it's, as it's called. Just a group of elderly people. Presbyterian is not a spiritual word. Okay? Just to help you. The word Presbyterian is not a spiritual word. It simply means a group of elders. Those who led Jesus to his crucifixion, they were all Presbyterians. So it's a Jewish language. It's a Jewish tongue. Like, it's a Jewish, uh, but a Jewish word. In their, you know, that they have Presbyterian. So, but in their kingdom, in the church, we also have the church Presbyterian. So, for example, the church Presbyterian would have been a group of, for example, now, all our ministers. So, when you see us on Thursdays, yeah, or sorry, sat on Saturdays, we enter the room and we do meeting. Amen. That's the Presbyterian 
So we say, so we, we in, in our day today in the Gen Z language, we say the board of is it Gen Z language? The board of ministers. It's not my language. And I, I, I came from that time because they won't use the board of ministers in those days. Yeah, so if you come to this day, we say the board of ministers. But in those days, they would have been called what? Presbyterian. It's the same thing. Board of ministers and presbyterian is the same thing. And the same thing, so they, they would say where the elders. Are you following me? Good. So look at it. So who came, who came here now? The elders and the chief priests. And they came upon him doing his teaching. Because of time, let's jump to verse um, 33. And here another parable. There was, a, there was a certain household which planted a vineyard and edge round about. Ah. Amen. Amen. So he had run about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husband men and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servant to the husband man. Yeah, are you following everybody? That they might receive the fruit of it. So you see, the man has done good. He had invested. Yeah. So he sent servants to receive harvest from his vineyard. And verse, verse 35. And the husband man took his servant and beat one and killed another and stoned another. And again, he sent other servants more than the first. And they did unto them likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, and saying, they will, re they will reverence my son, but when, they, when the husband man saw the son, they said among themselves, this is the heir, come, let us kill him, and let us seize on, to, let us seize on his inheritance. Verse 20, 39. Are we together, everybody? And they caught him and cast him out of the vineyard and slew him. And when the Lord thereof of the vineyard come, what will, what will he do unto the husband man? And they say unto him, he will miserably, okay, Jesus said, okay. he will miserably destroy those wicked men and will let out his vineyard unto the husband man. Now, as, before we reach this place, who was Jesus talking to here? So it's very important when you, when you are reading Jesus' parable because they were the ones that asked the questions and he replied them in parables, like different about three parables. One, regarding his authority. And after he finished talking about his authority, he now switched. Because they have questioned his authority and he replied them regarding authority in another parable, which I don't want to go because of our time. But this one, regarding their position. Amen. Are we together, everybody? Yes, sir. Don't get lost. Follow. Where did I stop? 42, then Jesus said unto them, did you read, uh, uh, did, did you never read in the scripture the stones that the builder rejected, the same as become the chief cornerstone. Chief cornerstone will be what? The foundational stone. Yeah. So when you want to start building, you lay certain stones first. Okay? So the stone you are laying, the, the blocks for foundation is different from the blocks you used to build. The ones for foundation should be thicker. And was strong. So Jesus is saying that the stone that the builder have rejected has become the chief cornerstone. And by reference, he's speaking about himself. Because it was the stone of offense. It was the stone that was rejected. Are we together here? Yeah? So let's keep reading. So remember the vineyard, the, vi the husband man, or, or the owner of the vineyard, he had sent servants to require what? Harvest, fruit from the vineyard. And they killed all of them. So look at what he says. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you. Now, look at it. So, he told them that the kingdom what? of God shall be what? Remember when Jesus, listen, remember Jesus, please follow me. Remember there was one woman who, was, uh, who wanted Jesus to heal her. Okay? And Jesus said, or healed her, you know, one of her, ch her child. And Jesus said, I will know what? Take the children's bread and give what? So in that context, who was Jesus saying our children's, who was the children's bread in that context? The Israelites. Now, let me show you something. Amen. Amen. Are you following me? Yes, we'll come back to Matthew 20, Matthew 21, 24. Go to um, Philippians. No, no, no. Ephesians. Yes, Ephesians. Chapter 2, 
Ah, uh, so from verse 21, he said, Wherefore, remember that you being in time past, Gentiles in the flesh, who are called what? Uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh, made by hands. So he's saying, and I explained this during what you on Thursday. I, I said it's very important. Listen up, everybody, listen up. This is an important truth, and you must not miss it. So I, I, and I explained to us that in the face of battle between in the face of the battle between Goliath and David, if you are supposed to go there and do time travel, as we sit here, if we are supposed to go to Goliath and David sin, man, the side that you will be will be on Goliath's side, never on David's side. Because David were the circumcised guy. So we were the uncircumcised guy. We were the idol worshippers. We, we belong it. We, we belong it. <laughs> we belong. <laughs> God, have mercy. <laughs> I said I want to change this old King James. <laughs> it's affecting me. <laughs> so we belong to the Goliath side. So we would have been sharing Goliath. Kill him. Kill them. Kill them. And the guy would have come to us and said, hey, you are uncircumcised Nigerians or Indians or Georgians or Philistines. And we would have killed our warrior that day. And that's, because that is it. So remove, see, remove, try to remove the religion in your mind. Like, uh uh-uh, we are for David. No. <laughs> remove that. And just, because it's just, it's like this. It's like this. Some group of guys will just wake up in the morning. And they will march up around your city. Just imagine you are in Jericho. You are in Jer- just imagine you are a Jerichian. Huh? <laughs> you are from Jericho, okay? <laughs> and right there, <laughs> not Jerichan, okay? <laughs> imagine that you are in Jericho, in your house, playing PS, there. And some people are marching around and they said they want to pass through. In fact, why they, they were now circling around your city seven times? And your warfare. <laughs> At the end, because they, they didn't do anything. They were just there in their house. This I said, no, we want to take over your place. It has been given to us. I said, because I, I'm, I, I'm doing this deliberately to stir up your mind. Because sometimes when you are reading the scriptures, you used to, you know, you take sight. Don't worry. Don't t- see, that's the best way to uh, that's the best way to believe to receive Jesus clearly. If you apply, if you apply sentiment to it, you will not see the beauty of Jesus. Because we have been casted out. So those who are called circumcision, look at what it says there. Go there, go back there. Go, where did I stop? Ephesians 2 11. He said, Wherefore, remember that you, in time past, you were Gentiles in the flesh. Even those guys called you uncircumcised, those that were circumcised. That's what he's saying here. So if you don't understand the story of David and Goliath, that you were the one sharing Goliath, you will not understand this verse 11. You'll be thinking, oh, maybe they're talking about, talk about it. No, we are, we are, you know, we are for, amen, we are for Israelite. No. I'm for Jesus. I'm for Jesus. That's it. Yeah. Uh, is Jesus green? Is he black? Is he white? What's that? <laughs> he died on the cross and he rose again yeah. for my sins and including the sin of the Israelites. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. His skin color, whether he's tall or, you know, fat, it matters not anything here. And in fact, to be honest with you, the best Jesus looked is my shape. <laughs> no, no, people know that for you. <laughs> Me and Nikki, your, I mean, Nikki, your side. All the pictures of Jesus they have seen, amen. There is none that look like Dr. Houses. <laughs> they are not true pictures anyway, but all the pictures that people had projected about Jesus, none ever looked like Dr. House. None. Amen. The best you can see, like me. <laughs> Praise God. So, no, so who are called, listen, so who called, who called you uncircumcised? Yeah. Israelite. So look at, are, are you following everybody? So ah, because of time, I would have loved to go there. Where, okay, Matthew, go back to Matthew because of time. Matthew where? 21 verse. I stopped what? Verse 3. He said, therefore say I unto you, oh, go back to our Ephesians. Sorry, we should finish the Ephesians. Ephesians 2, amen. 11, yeah. He said, therefore remember that once, that you once Gentiles in the flesh 
who are called on circumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hand. That at that time, you were without Christ, being alien from the covenant of Israel and strangers, strangers were what? From the covenant of promise, as they have no hope and without God in this world. Now, understand this clearly, that those guys that Jesus would, came, Jesus would say, these are children, children's bread, okay? These guys, they had their promise. So because they had a promise, then they would be referred to as the children of the kingdom. Because they had a promise. Are you following me? So let's go back to our Matthew, Matthew 21. So Matthew 21 now says, yeah, follow. Matthew 21 says in verse 42, he says, okay, 43, he said, Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to what? A nation bringing fruit, bringing forth the fruit thereof. And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, and whosoever he shall fall on shall graduate the priests. Now, verse 45. Let's read it together. One to go. The Pharisees heard these parables. They perceive. So, so now look, so listen, is it very difficult for you to understand now? So, who was Jesus speaking to? So, who will he take the kingdom from? Okay, and give to another nation. So, listen, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, why will he take it from them? Because they do not bear fruit thereof. So, all the parables of, oh, I send servant, they kill him. I send servant, they kill him. So, forget about, oh, what is the servant? Uh, how did they kill him? What can the, you know, the knife they used to kill one servant? What did he mean? No, forget about what did he mean. It's a parable. So, you have to, all the thing, the totality of the parable, the, the bearer of the parable will then tell you what I mean in what I've been saying. And what has he meant? He's saying that, hey guys, the kingdom shall be taken away from you and be given to a nation that will bear fruit thereof. Are we together, everybody? Yes, Are we together? Yes, sir. Okay. Matthew, verse, I think, uh, <clears throat> I think we do verse, Matthew 8, rather. Matthew 8. Hmm. Now, remember the story of the steel. Okay, again, because around the, Okay, thank you. Every time, listen, every time in the Bible that Jesus will commend another person's faith, every time, there are people that are not an Israelite. For example, he would say, the centurion, this one we are reading now, he would tell the centurion man that I have not seen such a great faith, even in Israel. Why? Because, you know, because they came behind. Without, the timing is not yet time, but they came behind. Not like it's not yet time. Okay. Listen. Who had the law? Okay. Who are the prophets? The Israelites. So who should believe the gospel quicker and easily? Israelite. But you know what? The battle, the, the, the battle of Israelites, the battle why they could not receive is because of the law of Moses. It's simple. The Bible says the law has blinded their mind. Are we together? Good. So he now says, uh -huh. so look at that Matthew, Matthew 8. Matthew 8, look at verse 8. He said, the centurion answered and said, Lord, yeah, I am not worthy that I should come under your roof, under my roof, but speak a word only and my servant shall be healed. Now, uh, let's jump to verse, um, uh, verse 10. And when Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them, that followed him. Very, very, I saw unto you, I have, not, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. I say unto you, the many, that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of what? Which if, which also means what? Kingdom of what? Because we are Matthew, we are reading Matthew. So Matthew will use the heaven. So it's the same thing. So when people will come, so when Jesus will say this, that they will come from the west and the east, what is he talking about there? He, said, he, was saying, he clearly saying they will come from Nigeria, from Ondo State, from, uh, you know, everywhere. And they will come and sit with Isaac and Abraham in the kingdom of God. So Jesus, so it, it, let me say, I told us, because we are looking at the teaching on Thursday, I mean on Tuesday, progressive revelation of God's word. Jesus, listen, the mandate is for the whole world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. 
he was, Jesus was to die for the whole world. But he came to Israel. There's a reason for that. Why? Number one, they had a promise. They had the oracle. So God did. I explained to you. God has chosen Israel, okay, as a nation to explain his eternal plan right from time. Listen, listen. The gospel is about the kingdom of God. Everything that went, I told you again, I'll repeat again. It is never about heaven or hell. It, see, read Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read it well, closely. It was never about, there's no need to magnify hell and heaven. Is there a heaven? Is there a hell? Yes. But it's not about it. It has always been about the kingdom of God. If you read Daniel's story, we'll look at it some other time. Daniel's story, he will say, ah, and the king saw a vision, and this one, they, 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 like a beast, he has a head like this, waist like iron. No, no, no. Then suddenly, a stone fell from heaven and hit them, and that one is the kingdom of something, kingdom of God. Everything that's bad is about the kingdom of God, kingdom of God, kingdom of God. John the Baptist came, preaching about what? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Everything, kingdom, kingdom of God. They came to Jesus after resurrection. Will you at this time restore the kingdom? Because that's all about. It's not about heaven or hell. It's about the kingdom and his mandate and his glory. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. Let me tell you something. Do, 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 you, do you think God delights that you die eh, without impact and you just go? It's, see, if you die without impact, it's one of God's regrettable uh, oversight. Because the kingdom of God is in you. God expects, God desires to see you reveal his kingdom. Then he would say, let your light so shine before men. Let them see your good works and glorify your father which is in heaven. It's about the kingdom, the mandate of the kingdom. The Holy Ghost. Paul. So they came to you. Look at it. They came. Restore the kingdom back to us. Jesus said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Then you'll be witness unto me in Judea, in this place, unto the uttermost part of the earth. That's what he wants. It's not that I want them to come. If, if it's about heaven, if it's about people going to heaven, then we just march people out. If you want to receive Jesus, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And as they're coming out, as they made the decision, shoot them. <laughs> because after all, they are going. How you get But it's not about it. It's about you taking authority over sickness. It's about you taking authority over mental, torment, mental oppression. Taking authority over it. Are you getting what I'm trying to say here? Yeah. Over finances, over poverty, over death, over sin. Taking authority over them. Taking authority in Christ. God has designed, God wants you to enjoy life. And I mean life, life in Christ. Amen. Praise God. Last scripture, hopefully. So, where, where, where did we stop? Where did we stop here? Okay, look at it. So, Matthew 8, 11. He said, and, and I say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west and sit down with what? Now, you understand what he said, many shall come from the east and the west? Because it's simple. Who, who did he just minister healing to? Well, who was it, you know, discussing to? The centurion. The centurion, is he a Jew? Was he a Jew? No. He was a, he was a Roman guy. He was a Gentile. And there was a time, see, ah, I told see, Revelation knowledge, listen, yo, Revelation knowledge is progressive. I have, see, by God's grace, don't miss the women's conference. I'm looking at, I'm teaching excess in Christ on the second, this is on the second day on a Friday. 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 This Friday, excess in Christ, women in Christ. You see, from, from Genesis, since the fall of man, till this time, people and that's what we're talking about when Pastor Seku also mentioned that human beings could not receive the testimony of women. Even when Jesus was erected from the dead, the first person that Jesus sent a message was a woman. He told them, go and tell my brothers that I go to my father, your father, my God, your God. He told them. When Jesus died, who came to? There were women that came to his burial ground first. They came there with oil. Men. Very egocentric. <laughs> very hard. Yeah, very hard. You, men don't like to be counseled. 
It's, it's one of our challenges. And that's why men always die first. <laughs> it is true. We like to want, we want to just do everything. Me, I've learned. <laughs> I, I love life. Hallelujah. <laughs> and so I like to seek. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Yeah. Yes. And women, that's it. We are talking, we are discussing about this recently. Men, very tough, strong, strong head. And there's nothing there. There's nothing this strong head. There's nothing. I'm telling you, there's nothing. I'm serious. Nothing is there. We just like it. We just want to be so born. Eh? God help us in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Women came and Jesus sent women. Go tell them. And when they went to tell them, eh, the men, they didn't believe until they came themselves. And God will want to get across to people. So God can, so in a place where a woman will not be accepted, God will send men. In love, dominion, women are accepted. So God is sending many women. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's as simple as that. If in your place or in any place they are not accepting the testimony of a woman, well, <laughs> that's, a, that's a personal problem. <laughs> in here, we look no XX or XY. You just get filled the Holy Ghost and release. Tell us Christ. When you bring Christ to us, we get healed. Just as simple as that. You get my point? But, but this is it. This is not a war against anyone who does not accept the testimony of a woman. That's them. And if you are here as a man, it's a problem from you to accept the testimony of a woman. Uh, no, you love Domino. That means you just came in. <laughs> that means you just came in. Where did I stop again? Uh -huh, so, I was, remember, remember the madman of uh, Gadari? Gadarini. You know about the madman? That Jesus went, took boat, boat, went to with his disciples, and there was a ah, master. You know there was wind and storm. And said, master, do you care that you care that we perish? And Jesus said, no, 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 and peace be still, and all those things. Are we together, everybody? Jesus, see, follow me. I don't want to go there because of you know because of time. Jesus told his disciples, "Let us go to the other side." And they entered the boat. There was storm. The UK will perish. Blah, blah, blah. Jesus went through a lot in that journey. A lot. It, it, it could cost his life and the life of his disciples. Five minutes more. Amen. Are we together? It could cost his life and what and that of his disciples to go to the other side. He went to the other side quietly and met that madman. Jesus healed one madman. And why they was casting out the demon? They said, because, you know, that, that area is actually not a Jewish region. Because the Bible said they had heads, pigs. There are a lot of pigs. In the Jewish culture, pig is a sin. So the people, those guys that were rearing pigs, they were Gentiles. Okay, because they can eat pork. And Jesus went there, healed that guy, and went back quietly. Because at that time, eh, it's very difficult. Ah, you hear the Gentile. It's very difficult. Except the Gentile is a soldier. That you don't have mouth. You get because you cannot question. <laughs> you cannot question the authority of a soldier that just gets you. Are you are you crazy? Why are you questioning my daughter will be healed? Kill him. <laughs> so Jesus can publicly do that. Even when he's doing that, he's doing that with politics. So, no, no. Ah, ah. This guy. Amen. But after resurrection, he will tell them that, ah, go and bear witness to me, of me, in Judea, Samaria, uttermost part of the earth. So the mandate of God is to reach the whole world. But he will pick a nation to explain his eternal plan. He will pick just Jacob. He said, Jacob have I love. Esau have I hated. We looked at that. Jacob have I love. Esau have I listed. I was saying that the Esau that was hated. If you read that place, and Esau have I hated, that Esau that was hated had more money than Jacob. At least the one we read. He had cartoons. He had many things. The hatefulness or whether hated or love, it has nothing to do with emotion. It is about the promise. So there's a promise that Jacob will receive. And that's the promise of the kingdom. The promise of the spirit that was transferred 
from generation to generation. It has nothing to do with Bugatti, like I told us, or anything like Ferrari, or moto, or car. It's about the promise of the Spirit and the kingdom. Last scripture. Hallelujah. So that, that 8 12, Matthew 8 12 says, But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out where? And there shall be what? As we have been reading since, who are the children of the kingdom that we just read here? Ah. Hey, now see, this is not hard. Wait, see. We are already confused already. Look at Matthew 8 11. Eh? Matthew 8 10. He said, Very, very, I say unto you, I have not found such great faith, not in Israel. I say unto you, that many shall come, what? And sit down with Abraham and, and in the kingdom of what? Of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out. What we read earlier, he said, I will take the kingdom shall be taken from you. From who? And after he said they will take it from you, he said, they perceive the chief priests. They knew the parable is about them. Uh -huh. It is you that now in 2027, you'll be claiming that you'll be cast out from the kingdom. 2024. Imagine, 20, 2024, you are reading Jesus' story here. And you are, Jesus, Father, don't let me be cast out. How did you come to that conclusion? How did you arrive? How did you put yourself as a Jew, as a Chapharisee, as the chief priest that the kingdom was taken away from? How? He said he sent servants, they killed, they beat. And he said, the kingdom will be taken from you and will be given to nations that will bear fruit thereof. And the Pharisees that we're talking to, they knew was talking to them. You in 2024, 2024, 2024, that you have believed the gospel, you now conclude in your mind that you are the one that. Have you come to say? Okay, look at Matthew. Okay. Hallelujah. We need we need the last scripture. Matthew and 20. Are you there? Matthew 20, let's read from verse. Uh, 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 from verse 1. Huh. I think this is the last, and I promise you, I will not read another one. We'll, we'll touch it again. Because we are going to be doing kingdom series for a long time. For the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is a householder. So what is it? What are we describing again? He said, which went out early in the morning to hire laborers into his vineyard. And when he had agreed with the laborers for a penny a day, he sent unto them, he sent them into what? His vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said unto them, go ye into the vineyard and whatsoever is right I will give unto you. And they went their way. Again, he went out about the sixth hour, like 12, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock. Okay. And night hour, nine o'clock, and he did likewise. And about the eleventh hour, that is eleven hour before one hour to the day end, he went out and found others standing idle, and he said unto them, Why do you stand here idle? And he said unto him, Because no man has hired us. And he said unto them, Go ye into the vineyard, and whatever is right, you shall receive. Don't forget, what are we describing here? The kingdom of heaven, kingdom of God. Good. So when evil was come, the Lord of the vineyard said unto the steward, Call the laborers and give them their hire, beginning from the last unto the first. And when they came, that was were hired about the eleventh hour, they received every man what? A penny. What did he promise the one that on the third hour? A penny. So they got angry, look at it. But when the first came, they supposed that they should have received more. You know? No. When the, listen, when the master hired you, he said, I will give you a penny. It's a work day. So let me tell you something. Let's say, let's say okay, by God's grace, I am, you know, I'm one of the directors of that atom. And, and I called you, come and work for me. They're working a whole day. I'm paying you $200. From six to six, $200. So that's what I told you. Then after a while, I went and I saw another one on the 12th, I mean, 12 o'clock. Mm, go, 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 go and work. And, and nine o'clock, go and work. 11, I mean, oh, sorry, um, 5 o'clock, I found another. I said, go and work. And when it was time to pay them, I paid everybody $250. The, the first one, uh, 
It's not, no, 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 no. That's what I told you. I was going to pay you. So listen. So I told you I will pay you. That, this is the, see, what I do with what, with my money is none of your business. Now, so if it, this is, see, listen, listen. If you say, if that is not fair, listen, that is not fair, it's fair, it's my money. <laughs> $200 is a good money. Forget you, your own, listen, all of you are looking at this. You, what you have received, think about your own alone. Forget about others. Now, well, now, don't apply this in real life because we're talking about <laughs> it's a parable. So it's one describing a parable and why is that you are asking, ah, ah, master, we don't understand. Look at it. Let's keep it. Finish. If I try this in that, I don't Jesus Christ. <laughs> Uh -uh. <laughs> That's why they used to tell people, don't disclose your salary. <laughs> if you try this, <laughs> just the workers will revolt. Where, where, where is it? Where did I stop? Verse, verse, okay, verse 10. But when the first came, they supposed that he should, they should receive more. And they likewise received every man a penny, which he agreed with them. And when they had received it, the mama, the word there, the word mama is different from the mama we did last week. This one mama is silent mama. Against the good man, yeah, I love it. Good man of the house. Saying, this last has wrought but one hour. And, uh, and thou hast made them equal unto us, which have borne the burden and eat of the day. But he answered, he answered one of them and said, Friend, I do thee no wrong. Did not. Amen. Are we together? He said, I do thee no wrong. Did not, did not I agree with you a penny? Take thine, take that thine is. Old King James. And go thy way. I will give unto this last, even as unto thee. Is it not lawful for me to do what I will with my own? Is it thy, is, is thy eye evil? Yes. Because I am good? Yes. That's what it means. So the last Shall be what? Shall be first. And the first, but few are chosen. Let, let, let me tell you what I mean. So it's simple, just to, because of time, I would have loved to read the, uh, the parallel, because of time, the parallel version of this. So it's simple. Who are the, who are the kingdom? Who are the children of the kingdom? Israelites. So now suddenly the Gentiles are coming to receive the gospel. And all of us are going to receive eternal life likewise. It's simple. So it's not, by, it's not because they've, they've had the prophets, they had Moses, they had all these things, and that's, ah, they, their internal life <laughs> will be more, more than, that's what he said, <laughs> more than my internal life. So, the, so that's what Jesus, that's what I'm saying. You see, you see, if you read parables on the surface, you just, you get too emotional and you get angry about it. But you have to understand what is the bearer of the parables trying to say. He's saying simple. That, hey guys, the last, who the first, who is the first? They will not be the last. It's simple. So now many of them, that's why we're saying many of them have not received Jesus. But when a large sum of the Gentiles have received Jesus, the revival will spring up, will spring up in Israel. You get the hand. It's as simple as that. You get what I'm saying? Many of them, many have received, it's not as if many of them are not receiving Jesus. Paul, Peter, they were all Jews. Yeah. But many, if you go to Israel today, today people go and do excursion and be kissing wall there. <laughs> Even holding concerts. It's ridiculous. But at the end of the week, but these this guys, very small percent are even Christians. Very small percent have received Jesus. Small. Now, they are all Muslims and fighting themselves, bombing people. How can somebody have eternal life in them and be bombing another people? Palestine? Is it Palestine? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Bombing. And they are bombing. And Christian. I said, go. Go Israel. Go Israel. Are you going to say, yeah? Are we not mad? <laughs> because we are still going, we are still using the Philistine, Goliath versus David consciousness. We are not thinking kingdom. We are still thinking Goliath versus David. Go Israel, go Israel. You, by the time they come and bomb you, you will say go Israel. <laughs> and you say go Israel. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, Zara is here. We were saying it. Thomas said, the Egyptian you see today, there's an Egyptian here. <laughs> From Egypt. Imagine when I start raising that prayer. Every Egyptian in my life. <laughs> I said that. How is, she, how is she going to do it in our gathering here? 
Are you gonna, how is she going to do it in that country? Because the kingdom of God is to Israel as well as to everybody. Are you getting the point here? Say, I've got eternal life in me. Say, I've received the kingdom of God. So when he says the first, take my Bible. When he says the first, we become the last. You know what he's talking about here? He's talking about the Israelites. And when he talks about the children of the kingdom, again, will be cast out into outer darkness. He's talking about the same people who have rejected the gospel. The Bible said Jesus came to the city and he wept on the city. Why did he weep? He said for they know not the time of their visitation. He looked at the city and he wept on them. We will look at that later, some another Sunday. The weeping of Jesus on that nation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't begin to identify with what you are not supposed to be identifying with. You are a new creation. The kingdom of God is in you. You are in the kingdom of God. The spirit of God works in you. So grow. Desire to, to, to explore. Desire to manifest. Nothing should limit you again. You have the Holy Ghost in you. Nothing. Don't, get, don't ever get condemned. Condemnation is not of you. Condemnation, there's no condemnation for anyone that is in Christ Jesus. It is time for you to rise and grow. Hallelujah. Say, I'm born of God. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. Say, I'm born of the Spirit. Say, I am in the kingdom. I walk in the kingdom. I see. My eyes see clearly. My ears hear clearly. In the name of Jesus. Say, my heart is conducive to receive the word. Say, I bear fruit always. In my marriage, I bear fruit if you are married. If you are, you are just in my relationship, okay? Praise God. Uh, but, but anyway, you can prophetically say it too. You can say it prophetically. Say, in my marriage, I bear fruit. Yes, yes, that's prophetic too. If you are not married. If you are married, yes. Amen. Say, in my marriage, I bear fruit. In my relationship, I bear fruit. Say, I walk in the light of the kingdom. Because I'm a kingdom ambassador. Say, I am of God. And I have, I have overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in me. Than he that is in the world. Say, I'm a child of, the, of God. And I am in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Bless God. Thank him. Thank him for the word. Thank him for the word. Thank him. Thank him for the word. Thank him for the word. Thank him for the word. Open your mouth and bless him. Thank him for the word. Say, Lord, I thank you for the word. Thank you for the gift of grace. For your gift of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 